Hey, this is Pierre Derider. We're outside the outer walls of 64 Sound, my studio in Highland Park. And this is Show Us Your Junk. Come on, I'll show you my junk. Welcome to the heart of 64 Sound, uh, the tracking room. I try to keep everything set up and mic'd up and ready to go. Drums, guitars everywhere, keyboards plugged in and ready to turn on and uh, really try to make it a Wonka factory of playground instruments for people to come and create and just easy, everything works. Pet peeve of mine going into studios, like I'd love to try that, and, but this only works on that channel. But everything on the floor here is always uh, in repair as best as possible. It's old, so sometimes stuff breaks. But, um, but yeah, this, this spot is a really amazing spot to me. It was all built in the mid-70s as a studio and went defunct in the early 80s and wasn't really, it was a personal use studio for somebody. And when I had a previous studio in North Hollywood for many years, lost that space and was looking for a spot to build a studio and found this spot, kind of cold called, and uh, made my way in here through the graces of the gentleman Van Webster, who uh, built this spot in the 70s and did all these amazing uh, screen prints, which you'll see uh, throughout the studio. So I restored it and brought in all our stuff. Everything here is kind of a lifetime collection of myself and my buddy Kurt Anderson and my buddy Dave Trumpio uh, at King Size Sound Labs. So yeah, we just try and keep this place a real uh, creative hub. Beyond the stuff that is ours, there's a lot of friends who park things here, like Jason from um, Rilo Kylie, which is my band. Uh, he parks these drums here. They are the house kit. They sound fantastic. Originally, oh, well, we had like my first four track. Just always recording. Kind of started having high school bands. And uh, my buddy Blake uh, moved to LA, and I moved not that long after. And we formed Rilo Kylie, and always just kept recording stuff. And recorded our first record in our living room and on eight track set Tascam 688. Moved on throughout throughout all the years of Rilo Kylie. Always had a hand in recording some tracks, some things, some parts of the records. And then 12 years ago, I partnered in with my first commercial space in North Hollywood and had that for a few years, as I was saying, and then eventually found this spot and moved in here going on five years ago. Here we are. I'd love to show you around. Uh, there's a lot to see. Come with me. Okay, so here is, uh, I guess, keyboard nook number one, organs and pianos. Um, what can I show you around here? This is a C3 uh, Hammond. And it was the same as a B3, but the C was for church. because There's extra wood in the front to cover the lady's legs. So that's what distinguished them. Um, this is a beast of a uh, quirk monster piano, which is always a little out of tune. But it has this really cool uh, mod where you pull that lever and then it becomes a tack. Piano. And somebody who can play a lot better than I makes this thing sound fantastic. You put it back and then you're back to your standard not tacky piano. There's lots of other little odds and ends around here. Things we shouldn't all be communally blowing on like this melodica. Casio SK-1, anyone? I love this thing. You can sample your voice <laughs> and do things. Let's see if it, sometimes it's weird and doesn't work, but yeep. Yeah. Okay, does that. Other things here to show you? I don't know, there's drum machines, there's things, there's a mirror, there's some microphones, uh, drum machines. This drum machine. Yeah, this drum machine uh, is awesome. It's uh, the very first production drum machine, 1959 Wurlitzer Sideman. It's all tube, and it's actually got three speakers all around. Uh, I assume they're kind of distributed, like woofer, mid, and tweeter, but I haven't really been able to divine that. It's all run on this, like, what is effectively just a big distributor uh, rotor that as it spins, it hits all the different contacts, and as it winds up, as you'll hear, 
That in itself sounds pretty cool. And then get it's got some individual. up and pull this up and that, that rotor's just going around faster and faster. Pretty crazy. Anyway, um, it's cool. We can do some stuff with it later. Do some more fun stuff. All right. Until then. Here is uh, where we keep the pedals and some guitars. Classic um, Mutron stuff and Electro Harmonics and Ibanez and a lot of Earthquaker stuff, which is super awesome. Use on a lot of things from guitars to synths to drums and stuff. We'll actually have some stuff set up we can get into. But also, um, these are really awesome. My, my buddy Brad makes these Creepy Fingers pedals and uh, he's just a fuzz guru. And they're just really great different variations of fuzzes, some based on old circuits and some of, of his own creation. A lot of, one thing I really love on a lot of his pedals, he's incorporated this gate. Just really breaks up and fucks up in interesting, unexpected ways. Uh, and on guitar, it's just, you know, kind of shorts in and out. It's really cool stuff. I really like things that are, don't sound perfect, irregular, unexpected and those do some really cool unexpected things for just a, a fuzz sound. Other little interesting things, my buddy Jake also just made a pedal company and this is his very, very first pedal, the OMG. And it's just a rad, creamy overdrive filter pedal. Sounds really great. I'm excited for him. And then, I don't know, different fun things like uh, space drums and other synth, synth pads. Just fun things to play with, stuff to create with. Um, this Digitech Space Station is actually really sweet. It's, but it's very, you know, not going to use it on much. It's not going to be on an acoustic record. Well, it, may, it might be. Um, interesting guitars, maybe? Like this guy? This guy gets a lot of uh, questions. Rightly so. It's just this, uh, I don't know who it is, but some luthier in Australia made these. My buddy Kurt discovered in some mom and pop shop. It's done, so, there's like no hole in the front. But this thing is some crazy amplifier of just, a, you just get a blast in the face when you're playing it. And so you, you could theoretically mic it stereo and do all sorts of stuff, but uh, it's just interesting, kind of fun and looks very weird slash rad. There's some keyboards over here set up along this wall. This is a uh, awesome keyboard. It's a Yamaha CS60 uh, on generous indefinite parking by my friend Gary. And yeah, it's just, you can Getting some crazy spacey sounds. I like to use a lot of these things atmospherically, just, you know, like maybe, maybe it'll be a total acoustic record and something like that will be floating around in the background going through some amp. Who knows, some juxtapositions or whatever, or just truly soundtracky kind of fun stuff, of course. Um, this here is an ace tone top five, just a transistor, kind of surfy. Uh, again, it's like rad pads for, uh, for anything, really. Um, similar to a Farfisa. This is cool, I have this set up. This is a DIY theremin, just uh, going through an afterneath. Woo and just turning this thing on sounds awesome. Here we are in uh, one more 
section of the main room, perhaps the final section we'll get to aside from little weird amp nooks and stuff like that. All these mics that I'm surrounded by, this jungle of mics, which I think may be my biggest passion. This is a really cool little ribbon mic. This is the RCA BK2, which was RCA's attempt to pack this 44 into a small package for desktop broadcast stuff and TV, and, and it's really awesome. It's also called the paintbrush mic. It has a little swivel. And it really sounds remarkably similar to the 44, just really flat and full and everything you'd want from a ribbon. Uh, this is a birdcage mic, which is a Western Electric 639 and also Altec 639B, um, multi-pattern ribbon mic. But yeah, just I, I love microphones. These silvery guys are the EVs. I really dig this whole era of EV mics. They're, they're really cool. Uh, looking, great aesthetic. They're also sonically very useful. A lot of different flavors. I, I throw a different EV up in just about any kind of tracking session somewhere, like whether it's like on the floor by the drums or up high or something squash or something distant, something, just try them all out and different things and happy surprises all the time. All right, you're still here. Welcome to the control room. This is uh, where I spend a lot of time, and it's got all the classic things you would find in a control room. Tried to organize things to some extent, so this rack is EQs and outboard effects, and this is compressors, and this is mic pre's and some more overflow effects and stuff like that. A lot of the classics in here as well. I, I'd say the majority of the stuff throughout the studio is definitely old, as old as the studio or older. Um, got LA2s and LA3s and LA4s, 1176s, the DBX stuff, and then we get into some modern stuff, which is so good. This is Bryce Gonzalez's BG2 compressor, which is just ooey gooey fantastic. Um, this is a rare Electrodyne CA700, I believe, um, compressor. This is a Quad 8 dual opto compressor, which is just fantastic. And then another local modern thing from Jeff Terzo, all these fantastic fantastic crazy sounds you can get out of that thing. Anyway, so there's that. And then these are mic pre's, more flavors. We've got a whole bunch of great pre's on the board, of course, but then uh, Longevin AM16s. This is the, uh, inside this case are these modules. This one we did ourselves and we said, let's hot rod it and make it look like the carburetor coming out of a car, I guess. But AM16s and then the two versions of those, which are the 5116s, which are fantastic sounding. Um, quad 8s. Neves, SSLs, some more modern stuff. The Avedis MA5s are great pre's, um, sort of Neve-ish, I mean, to, to generalize, but just fantastic. APIs, more effects. We do a lot of tape here, two inch M79. It's a fantastic sounding machine. Probably do about 10% of the time tape here, which is a lot, a lot of stuff that's the hybrid, tracking to tape, filling up the tape, bringing it to Pro Tools, doing the rest of the overdubs and mixing in there, but sometimes doing full old school tape all the way through down to the mix down and never see the computer, which is totally fun to do. Though I am a fan of the workflow when doing tape of the hybrid thing. You get all the juiciness and you get all the modernness and everything in between. So um, why don't we do something fun? We're definitely in Earthquaker land. There's definitely some amazing pedals that I like to, uh, to use on stuff. Um, and I could show you some things that I do. So it is fun to, and you can, of course, integrate pedals into post-production, or and you can use whatever pedals you like. I really do like these uh, Earthquaker guys for some really fun stuff, and you can use them, obviously, on anything as any kind of outboard effect. But this is a fun setup for drums. I like to do some fun things. Here is just a drum track. Just drums in the room and how they, they sound naturally. Uh, you can get some fun things. The avalanche run. It's got a cool delay and reverb and really mess it up. I like the rainbow machine just as a slap. It's in, Engage the magic.
Big Commander. turns into this crazy like giant washing through a big puddle of something. <laughs> Whoa. That's fun. And that's just going directly through Pro, Pro Tools, but also it's fun to send that signal out to speakers and in the room and then mic it from far away and you get an entirely different vibe sound on that same thing. So that was the direct. Now if I send it out, I just sending out to the room and mic'd up, get all the same kind of vibes going. I like it. And remember that drum machine, so I can get that going. Cool, so unmute that guy. There's the drum machine. And similar to what we just did, it's just fun to show the drum machine doing something. Here it is just in the room. You can affect it the same way. This is uh, our little B room. This console that's in here was our main console back up in North Hollywood. This is an amazing sounding console. It's an Autotronics 501C. It was JJ Kale's, his personal console. And, and in the back, I have his two inch 16 track as well. Right now, this room serves just for doing some edits and some stuff or whatever. But I also recently, <laughs> stupid dumb project of my own is I made this rack, which was filled with a lot of overflow outboard gear into a mic drawer locker. This is where I gotten to organize. There's a whole bunch of the EVs I was talking about. There's another whole drawer of EVs of various kinds, 630s, a whole bunch of these 635As, which are just great all around mic and just all sorts of interesting different kinds of EVs and salt shakers and a whole bunch of these EV666s. Um, anyway, the Neumanns and AKGs. A lot of mics, part of the collection. There's the collection, I like to collect them. We could show you a couple other little nooks. There's an archive, the tape archive. There's a whole bunch of tapes that were here. I took over the studio and there's the whole sort of new tapes that we brought in. So it's kind of fun tape library. Let's go. Here we are in the tape library. Lots of tapes. Uh, tapes that were here before and tapes that we have added. Things that we've recorded here. I got some archival Rilo Kiley stuff here and a bunch of stuff that was done here in the past. There's one tape back here labeled Devo, which is kind of cool. And uh, otherwise we use this, it's just another ISO. We've got a lot of other little nooks that we probably won't get to. Um, just places to put amps. There's a couple amps. That's it. This is probably the last place you'll want to see. You've hung in there long enough. Thank you. I'll see you next time or here or something like that.